So today we're going to talk about linked lists. This is the first real data structure that we're going to get into in great detail. As you'll see throughout the course, what we learn in linked lists is a fundamental building block of everything that's going to come up. So today I'm going to start and I'm going to tell you about nodes and how we use nodes in linked lists. Later on in, in the class, when we talk about, for example, trees, the concepts that we use to make nodes are going to come back up again, and we're going to see exactly the same concepts um, in, our, in our nodes in our trees that we have in a nodes in the linked list. We're going to use a combination of pointers to point to places in the heap. We're going to have variables that hold, for example, data in our linked list. And so it's going to be a, a challenge to get all of this together and make it all work, hopefully, seamlessly. So, so far in your computer science careers, you've seen arrays as kind of a standard data structure if you want to have an ordered set of data. And the problem with arrays is that they're never the right size. They're either too big, so You've defined your array, and you've only put a few elements in it, and so you have all of the extra room. Or they're too small, so you've added everything to your array. Your array is full. You then have to double the size, copy everything, and resize the array. And so linked lists are designed to be always exactly the right size. They're probably one of the most important data structures. Um, in their own right, they're something that's widely used. We use them a lot if we've got um, sequential data or, or just a large amount of data. For example, over the summer, I wrote some C code because one of the, the processes that we were using was running out of memory using kind of standard libraries. And so I wrote some really simple C code built around the notions of the linked list that we're going to talk about today that allowed me to store a large amount of data um, using just a little bit of memory. The idea behind a linked list is that we have this element that we call a node. And so a node is like a little block. So here's my, my block. And this is a node. Let's call this node A. And the node has two pieces of information that it holds. The first is that it has a pointer, which we'll call next. The second piece of information is whatever data that we put into it. So for example, if our linked list is holding integers, then our node might hold, for example, the number 10. So this is our essential building block of linked lists, this, I this idea of a node. Okay? So we can have lots of these. Each of them consists of exactly the same thing, a pointer that we're going to call next, and our data object, which, since my linked list is holding integers, all of them are going to hold integers. Here's, oops, this is B, and here's C. Same thing, I've got a pointer and I've got some data. Okay. Once you've got one, it's easy to make multiple different um, instances. So what about this pointer? So each pointer points to a place in memory. And so the pointer points to the adjacent node. That's why we call it next. It points to the next node. So we've got node A, and node A points to node B. Node B points to node C. And node C points to node D. And here's node D. And node D just points to null because there's nothing after D right now, okay? So in each node of our linked list, 
The next is a pointer that points to some space. And in fact, in reality, this data is a pointer as well that points to some element, um, but we're going to treat that as a variable that's just pointing to an object. But it is a pointer. So we've got a list. We need to start our list somewhere, and so by definition, we start our list with a pointer called head. And head points to the first node in the list. Okay? That's a linked list right there. That's all you need to know. Not really all you need to know. We need to know how to make them and break them. But this is basically a linked list. This is what we're going to use throughout the, the next section of the class is we're going to learn about these. As we're going through this, it really helps to have a little sketch like that so that you can think about the operations that we're going to do on the list. So one of the things to note about the, the linked list is that the only way we can access data in the linked list is via the head. Okay, this is the only thing that we know. We know where the head is. We know we have a pointer that says, if you go to this point on the heap, you'll find the head node. And so we have two different things here. We have um, the next, which is head.next. And we have data. And head.data right now is equal to 10. Yeah? Because head is holding 10 in its data variable. And what does head.next point to? It points to the next node, which is B. So head.next points to the next node. So here we have head.next.data, which is 15. And we have head.next.next. .next which points to the C. And so when we're at C, we have head dot next dot next dot data, which is 25, and so on. When we use our linked list, we're not going to use head dot next dot next dot next dot next dot next dot next. Right? What we're going to do with our linked list is start at the beginning and go through each of the nodes. And we'll learn how to do that today using temporary pointers. So we take a temporary pointer that starts here, and we go through the, each of the nodes in the linked list. <coughs>